With the crime rate on a steady decline, Canada could be seen as a very safe place. The stories in standard death. Climate change, uh, you know, the water's heating up. There's a, there's a lot of things happening in the atmosphere that are affecting the water. Check, 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 check. I'm really uh, suspect about humans. And uh, I get a lot of complaints from my cousins. I really just have uh, conflict in my really small mind about uh, Really, what humans do in the watershed. And then we're off the hook. It's as easy as that. Very warm, it doesn't know what's going to happen, and boom, there. You have to be very quick, eh? Um, I'm, a, I'm a campaigner, uh, campaign director at uh, Forest Ethics Advocacy. We really like to eat things out of the watershed, and it's unfortunate for you that wild salmon are part of that. Love, love salmon. Love, love eating. I love salmon. Well, how is it like swimming upstream? Is it hard, or do you just have like the muscles for it? If you could choose one stage of the salmon's life cycle, which one would you choose? I had one on the top of my lip, and when I at school, all the kids thought it was a piercing. We, we, we agreed for only one take, because we're hungry hiders. Up your water! Will Salmon here with Ramona, special interviewer, and we have some guests on the program, Hammy and Sammy, welcome. And Hammy is an alevin, which means she has a backpack of food for her as she makes her aquatic journey. And then Sammy is, uh, looks like she's been able to eat all her food and survive on her own as a silver sockeye. Ramona, you have some questions for them? Yes, I do. So, is the water cold out there? Well, yeah. duh, yeah. it's freezing. Yeah, I guess At I should this time have of year. that. Um, have you ever seen a fish hook, like, just out in the water? Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, once I had a hook on the top of my lip, and others thought I had a piercing. That and it wasn't a piercing. Is that bad, is that bad or good? Uh, well, it's not bad. It's okay, I guess. Yeah, in my school, everybody has tons of piercings. Yeah. So, I don't think that was very cool. So, do you have any siblings? Uh, uh, probably, yeah. Yeah, we probably, we have a lot. Yeah. Do you know approximately how many? Um, no. No? No. That's I can't okay. keep track. So in fish school, what kind of things do they teach you to stay away from? Um, uh, seals, killer whales, nets, 
Oh, humans. And fish farms. Will, Will, hey, Will, Will D. D, where are you, Come man? Come on, man. Ah. This way, this way. here, we need our dancer. Yeah. This way. This is your song. If ever there was a song for you, Will D, Honor it's this you. one. You gotta show people what they gotta do when they're gonna travel up your watershed. Let's do it. One, two, three, four! Redbacks cruising up the Fraser River. Check, check, check. So what is that thing for again? Oh, huh? this orange thing. It's where I carry my food. For like, yeah. It's like a backpack to carry food in. Oh, that's cool. So do you guys have a best friend? Uh, well, mine is Hammy. Sammy. That's cool. So what do you guys do to pass the time? Um, swim, play, avoid yeah. hooks. <laughs> is swimming upstream really hard, or are you just born with the muscles to do that? Kind of just born with it. Yeah. Well, that's Hammy and Sammy and Ramona with a special report here in the Whale Salmon Show. Now back to the studio. Five, four. Three, two. Hello, my name is Darren and this is my friend Will. 
and we are going to ask you a few questions. Great. The first question is, what is your name? My name is Karina. Hello, Karina. Hello. The second question is, what do you feel about nature? I feel hmm, full about nature. I feel connected to nature. I feel, um, I feel a lot of things about nature. It changes all the time. My relationship with nature changes all the time. Um, but I feel, um, I feel really blessed, and I feel really privileged, and I feel really, um, yeah, I feel really honored to have a relationship with nature that is constantly growing and constantly evolving. If you were salmon, what kind of salmon would you be? That's a tough question. Um, I think, Will, here, you're a chum, am I right? You're a chum salmon? This is what I've heard. The rumors, the rumors say, um, I think I would be a chum salmon, and then you'd be chums. Oh, thanks, Will. <laughs> The fifth question is, yeah. what kind of stage would you choose if you could choose one to be? Um, like in the life cycle mm -hmm. of the salmon? Yeah. Uh, I think I would choose to be an egg. I think I would choose to be a tiny little salmon egg. Um, because it feels really good to be nurtured and it feels really good to be like all like squished up with your brothers and sisters in a big pile. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I feel really new. I feel really new in this world. and. Uh, I feel really, yeah, I feel, I feel like a baby. <laughs> I feel like I'm brand new and I'm learning so much and so I think I would choose to be a brand new salmon egg. And the last question is, do you know the salmon bump? Do I know the salmon bump? No. Will you teach me the salmon bump? Oh, cool, let's do it again. Cool, can we do it? Seems so easy in the here and now. Ring your bell and I'll ring mine. And while we're talking, we will try to save the world. When we're restless, we will rise. Even though it's long out of our way, I think we'll go 10th Avenue. Doesn't look like it'll rain today And it's worth it for the view I could live forever here in this old bike I could live forever here on these old wheels I could stay forever here if this whole world stayed the same But you know what they say, this too shall change Quiet humming of my bicycle 
the center of my gravity. Is this momentum that I found? The only way to keep my balance now. I need to learn to let this go. The only way to keep from falling down. Just keep moving down the road. I could live forever here in this bold love. I could live forever here with these wild ideas. I could stay forever here if we just hadn't been afraid. But you know what they say, that maybe it's better. Because I could live forever here in this little life. I could be forever here with these simple dreams. Louise and Brian. Actually, that's Louise. I'm Brian. Okay, I don't, as a fish, I don't really know my gender, so thank you for the clarification. Yeah, nice. We got one for the boop reel. You got the first hey, one. Uh, All right, good job, buddy. Mind? Way to go, hey. Louise. Brian, do you mind checking for a sec? Check, check. Check. <laughs> check. Good. You got a check for me? <laughs> it's, uh, it's in the mail. Okay. Oh, damn, I'm a female. Why? You fish. I fish because it, it is a. Uh, it's it's fun. Like I. For you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, like ever since I was a little boy, Dad took me fishing, and. Uh, Who is this guy? I was hooked right away, except he was afraid of worms, so I had to put the worms on the hook myself, and then so I I discovered that feeding the fish with worms with a hook snuck in there was a lot of fun as a kid. Yeah, we don't eat worms no more, just so I'm saying that's why you never... So, um, all right. Now, um, what do you do with these fish after you catch them? Uh... Well, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but um, they're really tasty. And, uh, all right, let's talk to Louise. So, Louise, uh, um, what do you do? Um, well, yeah. for pink salmon, I can them. I oh. cut them up. I squish them into a jar, and I put them in a pressure cooker and cook them for a hundred minutes. Then I take them out, and then we get to enjoy them. Do you guys like basketball? Or like, a, you know, how about, uh, do, do you eat other things? Check, 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 check the river. Check, check if it's clean. Check, check, check if there's a pipeline. Check, check. We eat vegetables, you eat other fish. Yeah. It's life. And you probably don't do it very nicely either. You probably just eat them live. Very much. Ah, salmon, I tell you. Hello. Hello, and you are? Seren. Hello, Seren, and? Ah, you don't speak much, huh? OK, but uh, I am Dr. Legume. I am a plastic surgeon for uh, vegetables, and I'm very, very happy to be here today because we both share a lot of concerns. I share concerns about legumes or vegetables. Yes, many years ago, I became aware of the problem of the pollution of plastic. Plastic everywhere. So my clients, legumes, came to me, and I had to free them from all the plastic they were growing in. Same thing with the salmon. Or the fish, lots of problems with plastic, no? Mais oui, bien sûr. Beaucoup de plastic partout. So, for you, I, uh, for the, so they have the same problem. So, I started to operate on plastic or vegetables that are cut in, cut in plastic. But, you know, I also became aware that people don't think that vegetables have feelings, too. Did you know that, sir? No, I did not. Well, they do. They do. And so, like animals, and I'm glad we're starting to think about animals. Would you like to be dropped in boiling water? Would you? No. Would you? No. So, but we do have to eat them. So today, I am going to show you something very important, OK? But before, I must say, if you are at all squeamish, don't watch, OK? Because I am in front of you going to take care of, well, I'm going to, you know, the vegetables, OK? 
All right? So you, you have to be okay with that. But I'll do it as many as possible. D'accord? On est tout d'accord? No, if you have peur or anything, don't watch. So very quickly, we'll show you. I have developed these techniques over at least 10 years of practice. So, and now you too can do it from now on in your kitchen. It's very simple. You don't need very much. But first, you have to have a nice atmosphere because huh, the vegetables, they want to be relaxed. So, always a nice atmosphere, a little music. We don't have music. Okay. Ah, so you need also a very sharp knife. So very important because, you know, like if you're going to do something, you don't want a dull knife. D'accord? D'accord. Okay. So, very simple. You have just to figure out first where the vegetable has its heart or its head. And I'll tell you about it very shortly. Okay. You also need an old sock, uh, a nice warm sock. All right? You definitely have some old socks around the house. That's also very important. Okay. So, Saren, could you give me, let's, may, let's start with uh, the longer vegetables. Can you give me an, uh, an aubergine, a yellow aubergine? Thank you. So, again, they are there so they don't see what happens here. Okay, because once you don't want to get them to worry. So, right now, you just bring them a nice aubergine and you put it very gently in the sock. You figure out where the head, the head is always where the, the little, little thing is at the top. You put that into the, so it is very nice and very comfortable, and it does not know what's going to happen. So very carefully, while it doesn't know what is happening, you just go like that. That's it. It's that simple. And it never knew it was ha going to happen. Okay? So this is it. And this one is gone. Now you can cut it. You can do whatever for your ratatouille or je sais pas quoi. You can do it. But I'll do it again. Can I have another one, please? So, so you see. Also, I'll try to hide the knife so it doesn't see it till this moment. Very nice, very comfortable, very warm. It doesn't know what's going to happen. And boom, there. You have to be very quick, eh? So it does not know. So that's for the zucchini. You got that? You got that? OK. Now, let's do a carrot, for example. Thank you very much. A carrot. OK, we say the same kind of principle. At the top is the head. You put the head in. You do like gentle. Oh, you, have, you see, this is not good because now he's getting anxious. OK, there. That's done. All right, and we'll do another uh, vegetable to, to maybe a purple of zucchini, a purple uh, uh, eggplant, aubergine. So again, same thing, and you try it not to you soothe it to make sure, and very casually you may relax the atmosphere a little so it doesn't know what's happening. Okay, and here we go. It doesn't know. You see, Bang. that's it. All right, so that's for the longer type of vegetable, but sometimes. You can't tell that, okay? Is it upsetting you? Oh, I'm sorry if it is, but, but you know, they, they are much happier. Maybe you give me the tomato, for example. You see, the tomato is different because it is hard to know, well, if it is the head, it's going to be hard to do that. So with the tomato, you have to go for the heart. So again, you want to be very casual. There you go. And it's done. It's no problem. It didn't even know what was going to happen, okay? So there you go. So that is the tomato. Then after this, after this, you can uh, cut it in other ways. So I'll do another tomato, if I may, or thank you. Again, so they don't see the knife. Very nice, very quiet. You don't look away. You look maybe a little casual. Huh? No, no problem. On y va, on y va, j'arrive, j'arrive. And there we go, bang, right through the heart. One sweet cut, and they are very, they don't know what's happening. Uh, maybe uh, let's try something else. Just uh, uh, ah, I don't. Know. Maybe a, a pepper. Thank you. So this pepper is a bit longer, so it goes for the uh, the sock. And again, very carefully. There, there we go. No problem. So let's uh, finish. Maybe uh, what might be interesting for you to know. I'm a bit more different. Uh, is uh, the garlic. Garlic is a little more difficult because it is smaller. So when it comes to garlic, I developed this uh, technique uh, just not that long ago. And uh, I do it by, uh, you take one uh, goose dye, in goose dye. So it's very little. So it's going to be very difficult, right? So it's going to be difficult to kind of know about the head. You're going to miss it. You're gonna, uh, so I developed another technique. It's, uh, it's also very efficient. It's very comfortable now. And bang, it's gone. Well, this one got away on it.
Well, that's basically the technique. Once they, you know, they hit them on the, whatever you hit them on, they're gone. So that's it for the garlic. And uh, I think you get, by now you get the idea, right? I mean, uh, what, do you got the idea? You know what I'm talking about. Yes. yes. So, so the idea is to be very nice to vegetables. So next time you do a ratatouille, you do that. After that, you can cut them, dice them, boil them. It doesn't, you s'en fout pas mal, as they say, because they are dead. So that's, that's the idea. And you can see this again on YouTube. I show you how to do this so you can follow the steps again. And you can make a delicious ratatouille after. A very, very humanely done ratatouille. C'est comme ça. Je vous sais. J'espère que ça a été utile. Merci. Do you have any questions? Yes, I have one question. Mm -hmm. um, if you were a vegetable, would you like ever notice that if you're going like in a sock, would it be kind of awkward for you? Well, that's a very good question. I suppose most vegetables are not used to the sock. But on the other hand, it is so comfortable and it is so warm and welcoming that uh, it's probably, uh, as far as I can imagine, uh, I'm not a vegetable, so I'm not sure, but I think it would be nice. You know, if uh, it would be nice to be. You gotta treat your vegetables as you would treat yourself. That's the bottom line. Same thing with animals, like the salmon. You wanna treat them nicely, and uh, if you're going to be eaten, you, wanna, you don't wanna know much about it, right? Makes sense, right, Simon? When did you first start, like, learning about this technique? Well, these techniques, that's a very good question. When did I first learn? Well, many years of schooling, and uh, for many years, I too, uh, I must am afraid, I, uh, I probably wasn't very, very nice to vegetables or even the animals that we ate, but uh, I think many, a few years ago, I became much more concerned uh, because of the pollution, and I saw everything that was going on. Uh, about 10 years ago, I started performing these techniques, uh, these surgical techniques, uh, and so now this is all my practice, is just to uh, take care of uh, vegetables, and I encourage uh, everybody uh, out there to be nice and to, to think about, to be mindful of the environment and to be mindful of your friends, because we depend on them. Without them, we're history. This, a little light of
Hello, my name is Sarah, and this is my friend Sam. Hello, Hi, Sarah. Sam. Hey, Sam. Hi, Sarah. Yeah. My first question is, what are your names? I'm AJ. I'm Christine. And my name is Mai. Hello. 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 Now, my second question is, what do you think about nature? Lo love it. Really love it. Love nature, can't live without it. I wish I could spend more time in nature. Yeah, same. What do you think about salmon? Love, love salmon. Love to eat salmon. Love, love eating, I love salmon. I am very disappointed in you. <laughs> you want to eat me. <laughs> and you? I love how salmon travel. I love how they return home to spawn. Mm. I think they play a really important part of nature. I like to eat them too, sorry. <laughs> it's cool that they're in fresh water and salt water. They're flexible and diverse that way. I love that about you. <laughs> My next question is, if you were a salmon, what type would you be? Wild. Definitely wild. Yeah, wild. Yeah, me too. Wild salmon. Yeah. Wild sockeye salmon. Not farmed. What okay. stage would you choose? Spawning? I think I'd choose the stage right after you hatch from the egg because it's a new life. Hmm. Elfin. Hmm. Okay. You? Oh. Okay. Um, I would choose the stage, whatever it is, that where they um, go upstream. An adult. Okay. Oh. <laughs> nice. Nice. And thank you for letting me interview you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're with, um, what's your name, sir? Uh, my name's Ben. Okay. So um, I'd like to interview you just about your, uh, your perspective, firstly, as a human, and then you do uh, some work uh, with uh, environmental groups, and um, I'm in the water, so I don't uh, get the internet or anything like that. The computers don't work underwater very well, and uh, True, yeah. so we wanted to talk to you about that. So welcome well, to the you. show. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so uh, maybe just to introduce uh, to uh, my fishy friends uh, who you are and what you do. Sure. Uh, my name is Ben West. Um, I'm, a, I'm a campaigner, uh, campaign director at uh, Forest Ethics Advocacy. So basically I do work on uh, climate change related issues, environmental issues. Um, and uh, I'm a human uh, from here in Vancouver originally. Uh, grew up in this area, Coast Salish territories. So what, uh, so these forests are not very ethical? Is that why, uh, <laughs> the unethical forests? Or how, why are forest ethics and how did, what, explain the name. That's a, that's a good question. I, uh, well, Forest Ethics is an organization that was founded during the standoff in Clackwatt Sound. Um, <clears throat> and the idea is basically looking at the values that are inherent in nature uh, and trying to make businesses and people respect those um, sort of laws of nature. So, and your name's Ben West, um, so were you named first and then born, or uh, how does that work? That's a highly philosophical question, um, and uh, I gotta say, talking to you, I'm starting to wonder what's in this water. Well, but, uh, you know, it's came from over there. Right, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I don't know, what, I, I think, uh, I think uh, my family at some point was from the western part of somewhere, somewhere in Europe. Uh, probably in uh, Eastern Europe, but the Western part of it. So uh, that's that's where my name comes from, I think. Well, I'm telling you it works, just so you know. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. Now, um, climate change. Uh, you know, the water's heating up. My fishy friends there, uh, there's a lot of things happening in the atmosphere that are affecting the water, and uh, I get a lot of complaints from my cousins. My cousin Will, my other cousin Will, and then my other cousin, uh, his name's Will, huh. and then my cousin Wilhelmina from different watersheds. So uh, tell me about this climate change thing and uh, how it affects me. Jeez, yeah. Sorry about that. Your name's Will, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I guess humans are uh, basically treating the atmosphere like it's a uh, landfill in the sky. You know, we have this idea like we can just keep burning as much stuff as we want and somehow that's going to be okay. And what we've learned, and actually we've known for a really long time, is that we're just treating, we're, we're heating up the planet by trapping more and more of this kind of pollution in the atmosphere. Um, and the end result of that is, you know, ice caps are melting. Uh, you know, some people call it global weirding, uh, you know, because the end result is not only that we make some parts of the planet hotter, but it also makes, you know, the weather uh, more extreme. Uh, you know, we've seen you know, what some people are calling a polar vortex all over North America as of late. 
Uh, and basically it's just messing up the sort of natural balance of our ecosystems, uh, throwing things out of whack and the end result is, uh, is problems for, for everybody on the planet, humans and fish. Um, but, you know, I guess as a human, I, I feel like I should say sorry. I don't think you guys are doing much to, uh, to cause this, but, you know, we're, we're definitely making a mess of the place. Well, you know, that's kind of why we're here, and uh, it's a difficult question to answer, and thank you for coming on the show here, and uh, it's, you know, it's difficult for me to be actually out of the water, so uh, right, you know, we yeah. did make a sacrifice for not being uh, out there, but uh, uh, you talk about alternatives, or I'd heard about alternatives, so what does, what does that mean in terms of, you know, because as a fish, the whole like, human industrial thing is we got a problem with it, but I guess, uh, explain to me, huh. As a fish, why alternatives are even better than what exists now because we got what we got? Right. Well, I mean, basically, you know, some of the wealthiest people on the planet uh, who run the fossil fuel companies, you know, like coal, oil, gas, um, they've convinced us all that there really is no alternative to, to those kinds of fossil fuel based energy. Um, <clears throat> and the truth is that there's actually a lot of other ways to get energy. Um, you know, there's about three times as much energy from the sun that hits the planet in an hour uh, than we consume in a year. So, you know, it's really not a matter of a lack of alternatives. Uh, really what it is is political choices and the power of some of the richest, most powerful people on the planet, uh, you know, basically convincing us all that we need to keep doing things the way that we're doing it. Um, you know, so what I'm really interested in is like, how can we, you know, live on this planet in a way that, you know, we can be proud of, uh, you know, in a way that we can really be respectful of each other and of every species that's on the planet. Um, you know, so, you know, there's a lot of alternatives. Uh, you know, some of the easiest things are like how we get around, how we live, uh, transportation and housing. Um, you know, a tremendous amount of energy is used up um, in, you know, in how we build our homes, uh, how we heat those homes, and how we get from place to place. Um, you know, just as one example, uh, you know, if we in Canada adopted the, the fuel standards that they're uh, using in Europe, we could cut our oil consumption in half almost right away uh, just by mandating that companies built automobiles differently. Um, you know, if we were smart about it, we could be building a lot more rail and public transit uh, that could get people around affordably and easily. Um, you know, and most people want options to not have to be dependent on cars, uh, you know, because cars are expensive and uh, as our cities get more and more crowded, it's, uh, it's not really fun to, to be in your car. Why don't you just swim to work? Like, I mean, we got, uh, it's free, you don't have to, there's no tolls, and like, uh, you know, it works for us. Uh, uh, it's just, uh, I know in the Rideau Canal there in Ottawa, they like skate, so it's, I mean, it's frozen, but like, it would it not be, I think it's an acceptable alternative to swim. That, that seems like a worthwhile uh, idea. Uh, I'd, I'd be willing to give it a try, but I don't know, I might be late for Okay, work. well, we'll hold you on, and maybe next week it can come down in a little dry <laughs> suit, and then we can go... Uh, I got a feeling you're better at it than me, but well, you know, it's all about choices and then moving a little forward. So don't be scared, anyways. True. But, uh, well, thanks for coming on the show. You're welcome to come back anytime, and um, we'll uh, we'll see you out there in your uh, in the forest and uh, the salmon. My, my, you might run into a cousin of mine, so please uh, don't eat too many of them. All right. Yeah, I'll uh, tell him you say hello. All right. Take care. Thank you, man. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, yeah. Take care. <laughs> I'm Wildy Salmon. Back to you. Flu, flu season. Have you had your flu shot? Well, your ISA shot. Your your promoted yeah, vaccination. <laughs> nice. No. So, the and kids I, can ask me weird questions. So if you talk about the consciousness of a fish, we're we're off. You know, it's the 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 sentience of living creatures is a continuum, and it's a circular kind of thing. You know, and we're all going to be back where we came from. Huh. Okay. If you're in Australia, would you uh, swim the opposite direction? Jip, 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 jip. All right, with Brian here, a sport fisher. I got a real problem with this. So explain to me what that is about. Well, Will. You know, a long time ago, we used to harvest you guys, you know, using nets and stuff like that, but it got a little bit boring, you know, so we decided to add a little bit of a sporting element in there, and it'd be a lot more rewarding and challenging if we could actually trick you into biting something that you would normally feed on, and that's so we call it sport fishing. 
And I'm not it's, really happy about it's, this. It's a lot of fun. And it's been passed on from generation to generation, and it's evolved into like a very technical sport nowadays with, you know, $2,000 fishing rods, high-tech equipment, uh, lures that are made in, in, you know, like Japan and super custom-made lures and custom baits and everything. So it's, it's turned into this really like intense economy, challenge, fun adventure. Can't you just play cards or something? Something else, you know, like poker or golf or... Well... You know, what is it about sport, fishing? Well, cards is kind of boring, you know, and the great part about sport fishing is that you... We get to be outdoors and connected with nature and the whole experience with the rivers, the trees, the fish, the eagles, uh, the fresh air. That's... That's what we need to uh, be content and, and happy and inner peace, right? It's, it gives us a lot of joy to, maybe, for us humans to catch you. You know, this whole sport thing, maybe we got to turn the tables a bit. Well, what do you propose? Well, you know, like, is there sport humaning <laughs> out there? I could go for that. Mm. Uh, what would you guys, like, what kind of bait could I use for you guys? Well, well we know. That's a, know. that's a very interesting uh, element that you bring up. I mean, I'm sure that sharks go fishing for humans because, you know, they, you hear it in the news, sharks eat humans, right? And maybe it's for fun. I don't read the news. But, uh, well, I hear that you can't read anyways. Yeah. yeah. Um, however, this, this concept you have sounds really interesting. So what I'm prepared to do with you I will sh we'll take the skills that we use for sport fishing for salmon and transfer it over to, we can try fishing for humans. Would that, would that help, you know, give us a better relationship? You know, I'd, uh, I think I could go for this. Yeah. The one thing is, I've never fished before in my life. And uh, I have no idea what you humans would eat and how I could, you know, I don't, I don't know what you eat. Like, what, what do I entice you with? The, well, uh, humans are, sadly, a lot of humans aren't that picky about what they eat. So, um, fortunately, we do have some excellent bait for humans. Uh, I heard that Ricky's Restaurant makes some really wonderful uh, burgers and pulled pork sandwiches. And I'm sure that people would just love to gobble those up. And I'm, I think we can... Uh, I'll, I'll, I can supply some special, uh, like big game fishing gear, and we'll have some uh, pulled pork sandwiches, and you know, we'll let's we can hit Granville Street, and sounds great. Uh, see see if we can find any suckers. All right, that's a deal. Okay. All right, I'm Wildy Salmon with Brian, not Louise. Brian. Peace out. Hi, my name is Cookum Tansy. Welcome to Cookum's Kitchen, where I'm world famous for baking my bitumen cookies. Here's what they look like. I'll tell you a little bit more about how to make them later. But first, I'm going to tell you some stories, because the children here, I think it's important they hear about salmon of the past, the present, and the future. You want to hear that, small fry? Yes, Cookum. OK. Well, you know, Many, many raccoons ago, fish friends and not fishy friends, well, they didn't choose leaders just for the halibut, you know. They weren't floundering about. Um, and you young guys, or you went to school like boys, just like you do, hey? Yeah. And the p water wasn't poisoned. Did you know the water's poisoned now? Yeah. yeah, that's sort of sad, eh? And the water, the water, the air, and the earth are all poison. And back then, we all kept it clean like my teepee. <laughs> You've been to my teepee, right, small fry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty nice place. We prayed for your existence and, and for all our fish friends' existence. And because we didn't want you to be green around the gills. You know, that wouldn't be very good. And you didn't clam up about your rights. So, you know, let me just, I'll give you a little scratch 
behind your gills here because I want to make sure you're doing okay. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That's nice, all of you. Things were good. There were no farm fish back then, eh? Yeah. And, well, then the cod pieces brought their poison. That was terrible. Yeah. So today... <laughs> Today, well, things are different, and there's yuppies and guppies. Do you know what yuppies and guppies are? No. Okay. Well, some of them are kind of like, mm, they got a lot of um, money and lifestyle, and they don't want to change things. They get kind of lazy and comfortable and stuff. And, um, and then the small fry, they start to like their Xboxes too much and um, they don't pay attention. And so it becomes like um, gang plankton warfare out there. Kind of like when the colonists gave us smallpox and blankets, you know. So um, there's this guy who's supposed to leave the country and his name is Crime Minister Harpoon. Have you heard of him, Small Thrice? Yes, good. Yeah. And um, then there's a woman named Premier Crustacean Clark. Do you know her? No, good. Oh, well, she's uh, supposed to be leading the province, but she likes things like fish farms and stuff. So, um, anyways. They don't give a beaver dam about anything. And, and, and Crime Minister Harpoon, he's just kind of a son of a beach, you know? If you ever go to the beach, stuff. And crustacean, well, she just runs around like a fish with her head cut off. So, and those two, well, they're as slippery as eels. And, well, we got to convince the spawners to vote. And then we're off the hook. It's as easy as that. And um, it's time now for some shameless self-promotion. I just want to show you, again, my bitumen cookies. You take some bitumen and you just make it like a patty in your hands. And then someone bought the sun. So yeah, now it's called the sun corp, sun core. And um, you put these in the sun and you plug in a loony and you get five minutes for a loony of sun. And then the bitumen bakes up. And oh, they're delicious. Does anyone want to try one? Yeah. You do? <laughs> okay. Don't eat it, man. It's, oh, it might be too hard for your teeth, you know? Maybe that's how I lost mine. I'm not sure, but. Nobody knew. <laughs> Anyways, you know what? We got to learn to vote the sharks out of office. That's what today is all about. Because they got fish farms, but the ocean is really one big ranch with no fences and stuff. Oh, I like that. That's good. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what color fish you are. Never mind if you think this election is just for cods and frauds. You've got to vote the sharks out. Um, well, as for the future of salmon, well, have you ever think of a, heard of a thing called Nassau? Yes, cook them. Okay, uh, that's the, it's, what do you think that is? Um, it's a place where um, they send rocket ships to outer space. Yeah, the space program, right? And um, they send them to mo the moon and the Mars, and they're looking for um, different kinds of fish everywhere. That's what I think. And they've known a long time how bad Mother Earth has gotten, and they're looking for water when you know, all the money they spend, that NASA spends, it could be spent to fix the world. So I'm not sure why they're doing that. We don't really need astronauts or juggernauts. We might need the Toronto Argonauts. We also need the will nots. That's the people who say, we will not take it in the salmon bellies, you know? So no more patriarchy, okay? because uh, you just let them at me. I'm going to stop everything. But I need you to protect me and help me, OK? And salmon of the future, they're going to have big muscles. You want to see how big my muscle is? Just like that, eh? Yeah, so can you see show your muscles? 
They're going to even be bigger when you grow up. Right, small fries? Yeah. Yeah, because you won't take no for an answer. You're going to work hard, okay, changing for things. And that reminds me of a song that I'm going to sing. It says, when you fish upon a star, something all the difference you are. I, I don't really remember all the words, but I'm a pretty good singer, eh? But that just tells you that, you know, you got to believe in your dreams, okay? And then you got to work for your dreams. And so I want all of you, my grand fish, to keep blowing bubbles, okay? And work for your dreams, be good. Be good sometimes means being happy, but sometimes you got to get angry. Oh, here's, Rohan brought our, one of our friends up. That's nice, yeah. So, um, together we'll make things better and safer for you and for your children. And um, we'll keep the ocean clean because that's where our food comes from. And you want to keep the ocean clean because after all, you wouldn't pee in your refrigerator, would you? No, click them. No. I do. Oh. Well, you're sort of a fish of different color. Thanks. So maybe all of you, one day we won't have this bitumen to make any more into cookies. Okay, so I have a, for a few questions for you. Yeah. The first question is, if you were a fish, what kind of fish would you be? I think I'd be a carp. If you could choose one of the seven um, life stages, which one would you choose? Oh, I like it when they jump up the fish ladder because I'm kind of athletic myself, you know. I'm, I'm in pretty good shape. I'm fast and I can go high. So I'd like to be at that stage. And if you were ever like um, a salmon swimming in the polluted water, what do you think you would feel like? Super yucky. How you doing there? Oh, long live wild salmon. <laughs> I like that. I love you all. Will you all give me a hug? Give Gookum a hug. Oh, my small fries. So good to see you. Well, that's Gookum's kitchen for today, eh? <laughs> We'll see ya. Do your special salmon goodbye. Cheat on my uh, oh, jellyfish. <laughs> You're dating jellyfish? I, I am. There's so many of them. They're not all the same. I know many have broken up with me. It stung a bit. As long as you're not spawning with other chums. I would be skating normally. Where are we here? Okay. That's too fast. It's like Salmon.
and circle from the sea to the sea, up the rivers of life. Endlessly, they always return to the place they began for a million years. They swam and swam and swam. You're dying in the spring life renewed. The salmon circle from the sea to the sea, up the rivers of life. Endlessly, they always return to the place they began for a million years. They swam and swam and swam. They swam and swam and swam. 